Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Each task that you create within your project file must have a duration. This duration can be measured in any unit of time from minutes to months, but most often is measured in terms of hours, days, or weeks. When entering your tasks into the task list, you can enter the duration into the duration column within the table view shown within the Gantt chart view. You can also enter this information into the task information dialog box on the general tab if you use that method of task entry. When you set the duration of a task, remember that Microsoft Project will schedule the task as soon as possible, but only scheduling time during the available work hours that you allowed for the project using the calendar choice within the Project Information dialog box. For example, if you selected the standard calendar when you defined the working schedule when creating your project, any tasks that are scheduled will only be scheduled during the Monday through Friday 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. schedule defined by that calendar choice. Also note that duration can be entered in several ways using the following abbreviations if desired. You can use M for minutes, H for hours, D for days, W for weeks, and MO for months. For example, using a standard work schedule for a task that starts on a Monday and has a 5D as the duration, that task will finish on the following Friday of the same week. Since Microsoft Project is a task scheduling application, note that you will most often set the duration of a task and not the start date. When you set a start date, Microsoft Project will interpret that as a constraint on when the task can occur and will not schedule it ahead of that specified start date. Most often, tasks are linked to each other and one task can begin whenever the other finishes. Setting a task duration and then linking tasks to each other in order of the necessity of their completion versus specifying a definitive start date allows Microsoft Project to change the start and end times of tasks within a project file to reflect the scheduled reality of the workload. Also note that it is possible to schedule tasks to occur on non-working times, as indicated by your scheduling calendar. For example, assume that you needed to enter a task such as wait for paint to dry when you were creating a remodeling project file. Note that although this is a critical step, it is also a passive step that requires no active work. In this case, you can enter the task as an elapsed duration task that is, one that simply occurs regardless of the working schedule. To enter an elapsed time duration for a task, you simply enter the abbreviation E before the time abbreviation used. So using the previous example, you could enter an elapsed task duration for the wait for paint to dry task by typing 2 E H into the duration field for that task. That would set an elapsed time of two hours that do not need to be performed during scheduled work hours for the selected task. Now, while the vast majority of tasks that you perform are not elapsed time tasks, it is useful to know how to set the duration of these types of activities if needed. Also notice that if you are using the Task Information dialog box for task detail entry, you can check the estimated checkbox next to any duration that you enter in order to explicitly define the task as an estimate within the task list. Of course, the durations of many tasks in many types of projects are estimates, but checking the estimated checkbox simply adds a question mark to the end of the duration time. This gives others a visual indicator that the time shown is just an estimate. You can also perform the exact same activity by simply typing the question mark that appears at the end of any duration that you enter into the task list within the duration column. These are just two different ways of performing the same activity. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.